So we have made the case that the oppression of the Hebrews in Egypt comes in conjunction with the expulsion of the Hyksos from Egypt. In fact, in Exodus 1, verses 8 through 10, Pharaoh initiates the oppression over worries that Egypt would join our enemies and fight against us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies and fight against us. His concern may have been uh, less that they would leave the land, which is what most translations uh, render it, but that they will take over the country, uh, New Living Translation margin, as the Hebrew can also be interpreted. All this Egyptian backdrop then confirms something of the historicity of the book of Exodus. We, we don't have any direct confirmation from Egyptian sources, but the Exodus story does beautifully fit into known Egyptian history and this provides at least indirect evidence for its historicity. The date of the Exodus. Scholars are divided, those who believe that there was a historical Exodus, uh, between what you might call the late date theory, which would date the Exodus to around 1260 BC, and the early date theory that would date it to around 1446 BC. If you adopt the 1260 BC dating of the Exodus, the 13th century dating of the Exodus, then this gentleman here would be the Pharaoh of the Exodus. This is the mummy of Pharaoh Ramses II, which I happened to see when uh, he was touring the country, uh, uh, going on a mu museum tour some years ago. But anyway, uh, there's reason to believe that perhaps he would be the pharaoh of the Exodus. It says that uh, in Exodus chapter 1 and verse 11, that the uh, Israelites were building the store city named Ramses. Now the longer name of that in Egyptian would be Perm Ramses, built uh, by the Israelites. It was named after Ramses II, who reigned for about 67 years, nominal dates of 1290 to 1224 BC. And obviously the city could not be named Ramses until Ramses existed to uh, build it. And so uh, that's a very strong evidence. Ramses was a very great builder. The archaeology of Palestine has been argued to confirm this. Uh, Nelson Glick, a biblical archaeologist, believed that some of the cities in Edom and Moab defeated by the Israelites were unpopulated earlier than the 13th century. So if they were unpopulated before the 13th century, well then if the Exodus took place it would have to be no earlier than the 13th century BC. This is what Ramses looked like uh, in his younger days. Now there's some limit as to how late you can make the Exodus, and that limit comes in uh, a stella, which you see here pictured. It's a victory stella of Ramses II's son, uh, who was named Merenethpetah, and it dates to around 1207 BC. And it celebrates victories in uh, Palestine generally, but one of the victories was over Israel, and it has a famous line, Israel is desolate, his seed is no more. Now this is extremely important because this is the first mention of Israel outside of the Bible. And it confirms that Israel was in Palestine no later than 1207 BC. And this would be compatible with a 1260 uh, BC dating of the Exodus.
The alternative theory is the early date theory that would date the Exodus to around 1446 BC. Many conservative scholars uh, choose this date. And this would be about uh, the time of the reign of uh, Thutmose III. As we said, there's some uh, problems with Egyptian chronology, so there's other, there are other options, but the, a likely identification would be Thutmose, who reigned from uh, 1479 to 1425, according to one chronology. The evidence for this uh, 1446 BC dating uh, comes from 1 Kings chapter 6. In 1 Kings chapter 6 and verse 1, it says, uh, I'm reading the English Standard Version, in the 480th year after the people of Israel came out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month of Ziv, which is the second month, he began to build the house of the Lord. So according to that text, it was 480 years after leaving Egypt that Solomon began building his temple. Well, we know the approximate dates of Solomon within well, plus or minus 10 years. He would begin reigning around uh, 970 BC. Thus he began building the temple around 466 BC. And uh, if you go back 480 years uh, in BC from 966 BC, that would leave you at 1446 BC. Now those that reject this view uh, would uh, suggest a, a couple of alternatives. One of this is to say that that 480 years is kind of a generous counting of 12 generations, but in fact 12 generations are not uh, 40 years each, but they're actually quite a bit shorter, and so it's really more like 300 years, and that would allow you to make Ramses the uh, second, the Pharaoh, the Exodus. Others would say that text in 1 Kings 6.1 may be corrupt and uh, need to be corrected to something smaller. Now, Ramses is mentioned in Exodus 1 and verse 11, but is that really compatible with an early date? And the answer is yes. It turns out that Ramses, or the Egyptian name P. Ramses, was the new name given to an old city, an old city that had formerly been called Avaris, Avaris, which was the Hyksos capital. When Ramses renovated Avaris, he renamed it after himself. Now, if the early date of the Exodus is correct, then what has happened is that the Israelites labored at what was at the time called Avaris, but later on Ramses renamed it, and biblical tradition updated the name to reflect later usage. It's like the discussion we had over that oldest uh, Hebrew manuscript, uh, B19a, is it the uh, Leningrad Codex or St. Petersburg Codex? Well, at one time it was called Leningrad, uh, but before and after that time it was called St. Petersburg, and the uh, Place names sometimes change. Well, what about the problem with Transjordan archaeology? Well, Glick himself only did surface excavations, and subsequent excavations have found at least some additional evidence of 15th century occupation in the Transjordan. To summarize, strong evidence exists both for the early date and the late date for the Exodus. And although I lean towards the early date personally, the case for the early date is not airtight, and a late date could well be correct. And that ends our historical introduction to the book of Exodus.